Thank you, folks. Uh, we got a good show here tonight, and thanks for helping uh, us help Linda Gray straighten out her life. My first guest is a frequent contributor to the New Yorker magazine and also is the host of the Prairie Home Companion radio show, about which we'll talk later. And it will also be broadcast this week from Town Hall right here in New York, New York. We're delighted to have him back with us. Please welcome Mr. Garrison Keeler. Garrison? <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for being back with us. Let me uh, ask you a couple of questions. First of all, for, for folks who may not have heard uh, the Prairie Home Companion radio broadcast, explain that. The vast majority of all people, you mean. This is on, on public radio, right? Yeah, it's on public radio. Yeah. It's down uh, towards the bottom end of your FM dial, uh -huh. <laughs> down in the high 80s. <laughs> explain the show? Yeah. Well, it's just kind of a sweet old radio show we do on... Uh, Saturday nights, people listen to while they eat their suppers, their macaroni and cheese casseroles. <laughs> uh, now, associated me... in people's minds with food, mainly, uh, because yeah. of the time we come on, we do a live show. Uh -huh. And uh, is it a prerequisite to have the macaroni and cheese dinner while you... I think for our kind of show, you wouldn't want to have quiche. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, uh, a kind of an old-time, old uh, folksy, not old folksy, but old folksy. <laughs> Yeah, it's for people my age who are getting, uh, <laughs> getting older by the minute. No, no, I think we've confused people. Anyway, it's on every Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. Saturday, what would 5 o'clock Central Time supper be? time. That's when you eat your macaroni and cheese, yeah, I think, about that time. time. Yeah. That's evening, back uh, where I come from. Now, th now, the last time you were here, I want to talk about two things. First of all, we yeah. didn't get around to this, I don't believe. You have actually thrown an oyster to a dog. Yeah. No, I saw somebody else do it. Oh, that's good. Um, and I couldn't stop him in time. <laughs> I, so I wasn't responsible for it. It was a dog that they wanted to cure of uh, begging at the table. Uh -huh. So he took a little raw oyster, about that big, and lobbed it, nice high lob. And the dog caught it against the soft palate, you know? Yeah. So that it went down reflexively, even as he was trying to bring it back up. Mm. Mm. And... Uh, he didn't beg anymore after that. Uh -huh. uh, now, Do you have a dog? I have two dogs. And, and uh, I believe that uh, my dogs uh, uh, would eat oysters willingly if they thought it was food. Uh, well, it is food. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but you believe that dogs uh, are the natural enemy of oysters or vice versa, right? There's something about the texture yeah. of the oyster. Yeah. My friend Roy Blunt wrote a poem about oysters, and the last two lines were... Uh, I prefer my oysters fried. That way I know my oysters died. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's not a bad way to go through life uh, with that, uh, that feeling. Uh, we're going to go away here, Garrison. We've okay. got to get some uh, business out of the way. We'll return, though. Don't worry about nothing. Uh, this is uh, Garrison Keeler. I have one other thing to ask you. I'll wait till after the song. Uh, and you also sing on your show, don't you? I do just very occasionally, about uh -huh. as often as I can get away with. Uh huh. And uh, this is something you wrote yourself? I wrote this, yes. Okay, and... I wrote uh, this for you. Oh, for me? Yes. That's very nice of you. All right, and then we'll, later we'll uh, meet the gentleman. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Garrison Keeler, and a song he wrote for us. <laughs> Give it to me, boy. Well, Mr. David Letterman, I ate some dust today. I've been pushed around and stepped on and honked at all the way. Got in other people's fights, paid dues I do not owe. And now I'm sitting down and tuning in your late night show. I hope it's a good one. I hope it's a darn good show. Better be a good one. David Letterman, I don't want no intellectuals, the brightest or the best. Don't want no Englishmen, I've seen enough on PBS. I don't want no writers on a book promotion tour. I see enough promoters every day around the water cooler. Want to see eyed people from the hard to believe. I want to see weird people. I want to see the weirdest people that I ever saw. Don't want to see my minister or my brother-in-law. Don't want somebody nice, somebody just all right. I want to go to work tomorrow. Say, you see that show last night, man, they were weird. 
Should have seen that woman with a hair on top of her head. This woman made little dresses for her parents. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, sometimes I imagine that I'm on that show with you. I know I'd be terrific. I think it's tough to do. I wouldn't just sit down beside your desk. No, sir. I'd jump out on the floor and run around and be grotesque. I'd cross my eyes, stick out my tongue, put beans up my nose, be an entertainer. That show will be the turning point in my career, I'm sure. I'll sign up with the carnival and do a national tour with a dog that swallows oysters and a girl in spangly clothes and Wally the Amazing who can whistle through his nose and Mr. Peter Estushko and his talking dog. <laughs> Mr. Greg Brown, the wild man of Iowa. Mr. Will Lee, the world's only turquoise blues musician. Mr. Butch Thompson and his seven, count them, seven dancing chickens. to the program. Mr. Garrison Keeler is here. Uh, also tonight, Mary Steenburgen will be joining us and uh, comedian Stephen Wright. Uh, now, that was a very nice song. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're entitled to. <laughs> uh, now, the other thing I wanted to ask you about your last appearance, you uh, uh, recited all of the counties in the state of Minnesota rapidly. Yeah. All but three of them. Three of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, would you like to amend that or change that now? Uh, let me see, I'd like to add uh, Faribault, Olmstead, and another county I can't remember. Oh, no. Now, now we're going to get more mail, because the last time you were here, they said, well, that's great, but he left out three, and now, in correcting it, you've left out one. Oh, gee. Did I mention steel? <laughs> Is that the other one? I think it might have been I steel you left steel out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, uh, now that we've cleared that up, uh, you, you uh, are a, a fine performer, but yet you consider yourself to be... Uh, frightfully shy, don't you? Well, I hope so. Well, I, I wouldn't want to do that as a regular thing, would you? Uh, gee, I don't know. I mean, I have a 14-year-old boy. I'm, I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> right. There's not a whole lot of dignity in doing that sort of thing, you know? But you did it nicely. You well, did I it tried in, to do it nicely. In a dignified manner. Not, well, being shy caused a lot of problems for you? Well, I'm kind of shy these days on behalf of my son, who, uh, you know, it's hard on a kid to see a parent you know, disporting themselves in public like that. Uh, Dads are supposed to sit behind desks like this. <laughs> so you, you'd make a great dad. You're kind of the dad in this situation. Well, I, I sort of, um, I sort of share your feeling, you know, but, but yeah, I think you're being too hard on yourself. That was not undignified what you did there. I, well, all right. I, thank you. I'll accept that, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but uh, how else does your shyness manifest itself? Well, I wear long sleeve shirts all summer. I've never, <laughs> never been able to tear myself away from it. Because when I was in grade school, there was a kid who looked over at me, and he said, geez, you've got thin wrists. And thin wrists? Yeah, and I, I felt terrible about it. I thought it was some sort of deformity. And... Uh, so ever since I've worn long sleeve shirts. Now, if I'd thought about it, I would have realized since I was thin at the time, by rights I would yeah. have thin wrists. Right. It only follows. Yeah. But you never lose something like that. You're always feeling there's something wrong with you that you're kind of, you know, freak in some way. Wow. Isn't that odd? Yeah, you're, you need some help. Oh, no. <laughs> Most people feel that way. Most people in the country feel that they are shy, that they are... Yeah. Intensely shy, and uh, I bet most of these people here do. But but see, uh, you're probably right. But how how many people here uh, all summer long will wear a long sleeve shirt? <laughs> see, they're in the, oh, they're in the dark. They're telling the truth. Yeah, some sort of an epidemic. Mm -hmm. Well, let me let me see the width of those wrists. 
Well, no, uh, that's the, see, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Well, they're thinner than yours. No, they're not. My, no, they're mine are even thinner. I doubt that. Yeah, what do you weigh? I'd, I'd rather not even say, but here. See, look at that. Get see, the, can we have the calipers, Tommy? No, I've got a caliper here. See, uh -huh. no, see now I've got plenty of slack there. No, you're, you have bigger wrists than I do. No, I don't think so. But, but you know, it's not, it's not been the kind of thing that's ever bothered me. Well, I'll bet something else has, though. A lot of other stuff bothers me, yeah. yeah. But it's not the width of my wrists. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Kind of an ugly turn, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, Garrison, your uh, your new book, uh, a collection of essays. Happy mm -hmm. to be here. Doing well, I hope. It's done well. I got um, paid my uh, down payment on a house and got myself a new tie. Well, you <laughs> you can't ask for much more than that. No sir. And uh, you'll be at the town hall with. Uh, the Prairie Home Companion. Yeah, four nights. Not four many nights. tickets left. Okay, nice to see you again, sir. Good luck with those wrists. Garrison Keeler, ladies and gentlemen.